Joseph as a person, exempting this one situation uh, is an outstanding person, outstanding friend, son, uh, outstanding pillar for his family. He would give up the little that he has just to help somebody else. And I think it takes a, a humble person to be able to do that. When you think about that word kidnapping and you think about what it entails, it doesn't fit Joseph at all. The thought of him going to jail blows my mind. I mean, look at him. There's nothing intimidating about him at all. And now he's going to have to suffer for 12 to 15 years. He's 24 years old. He's not going to get out before he's 40. It breaks my heart because I don't, I don't think he deserves that. I don't. I can't imagine him in prison. Wow. That was good stuff. Is anybody crying right now? Is it just me? Anybody? You feel that? That's the power of these films. Our job is to make judges suffer. It used to be real easy for them. Plug in the numbers, give them a guideline sentence, and be done with it. This judge was made to suffer. And so Mr. DeRoos was a young kid who was head over heels in love with a girl. There was a huge family rift. He snapped, supposedly kidnapped her, had a weapon, and transported her across state lines. So he's facing these massive, terrible, ugly charges, right? A rookie mistake would be to pick an image that was on the nose, like maybe show a jail cell. Instead, they made the choice to show him a little bit younger, Spider-Man t-shirt, that kind of thing. And the judge is looking at that kid saying, that could be my own kid. So this was the one that the guideline sentence was 135 months. He received a sentence of three months. Jill, Jill Gensling, did I say that right? Is Jill here? Hey, come on up. Yay. <clears throat> I was very excited that the film was selected for the festival. Quite frankly, I wasn't sure that it was that it was good enough. I helped with the editing, and because I knew the judge, you know, I felt like I could help pick and choose what I thought might be effective for him. First of all, it's a weird experience being on this side of the camera, because I'm usually on that side of the camera. Right. And it's also a weird experience having to sort of pull back the curtain on what we do in these training sessions because there is like a, I guess, a little bit of secret sauce. I mean, the reality of it is this isn't your typical sentencing film festival. This is a way we teach lawyers how to do this. It's just a non-traditional learning session. <clears throat> I'm from Arizona. It's a two hour time difference. I'm not exactly sure what time it is now, but I'm pretty sure it's wine o'clock. <laughs> Go and pour yourself a glass and let's have some fun and get started. The hero's journey is a theory by a guy named Joseph Campbell. One of the ideas behind it is that all great stories include the same characters. Every story has a hero. They're usually just your average Joe in the beginning because the audience has to relate to him. You're making this up. No, think about it. All great stories have heroes. They start small with problems to overcome, and then they gain the wisdom and power to solve their conflicts. Sounds like you were talking about Luke Skywalker. Exactly! <clears throat> All right, so that's the stages. Those are the characters. Now let's see if we can make this practical to what we do. The rookie mistake when we do these movies is to just slap someone on a couch and do a parade of talking heads. The juvenile justice system failed when it came to Chris. Child Protective Services wasn't there to save him. Well, I think we both was just trying to survive. That's not a movie. The way we really get to the heart of the matter is through pictures, right? That's what transports us into the world of empathy. And here, the fact that he was so devoted to his family, it meant something more. The doctor says she's 50-50 because her kidney was already ruptured and the poison was already leaking into her body. Two weeks later, I went into a coma. Things was coming due, you know, the rent was due. They was coming to shut off the lights. How was I supposed to pay for it? I was desperate, but I just hope that someone understands why I did it. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm not guilty. I'm only human and try to understand that we all fall short sometimes. Gives me great joy. 
Okay, so there's a there's a big debate. Do we put music in these, you know? And I say, if you can do it, do it. And here, Mr. Sloan is a gospel singer. Me and my dad, we make gospel music. So that was him and his dad's music in there, which is absolutely brilliant. And more importantly, it was absolutely integrated into the story, right? So this is a story, uh, an explanation of why this story crime happened. He was desperate for money. His wife, the love of his life, had taken ill. He had this transitory possession of a weapon. He made a small amount of money, and now he's in a heap of trouble. So the government's arguing for 33 months. Sentence, three years probation. It's really emotional watching these videos, and these films are a real good representation of the real America. The people that we represent are living their lives in this America that most people don't see and don't think about, but it's as, this is as real as it gets. These folks are like me. This could be my own son, this could be my own daughter, this could be myself. And so our job is not to go for sympathy. Oh, they've had such a hard life, poor me. That never gets us anywhere. Our job is to go for empathy. Lights, please, my friend. Anybody who's been in our system and lived these cases know that what's happening now is complete and utter bullshit. But, you know, that's the way it goes. There have been hundreds and hundreds of people who have been convicted in court beyond a reasonable doubt, and it's come out that it's not true. They're innocent. I didn't know what, how to stop doing what I was doing. I never made it to my son's funeral. His son was violated. These are human beings, so they deserve a little bit more consideration than a sentencing chart pulled out of someone's ass. I'm sorry that we didn't do the things that we needed to do to save you. Being in this situation forced me to look at me. And sometimes you don't like the person you see looking back at you. I'm in an adversarial system. It's two sides of the story. They've got their story. I've got a heart. Here's your award. Judge's choice, second place, and Ray Marcel Williams. And this is for our habeas unit who produced a killer, no, sorry, a kick-ass clemency video. It's like they say about writers, you know? If you want to be a writer, write. Just go write. Make a movie. Yeah, I think it went great. I think, um, I think each clip was really impactful in its own way. And I was surprised. I was literally crying at the last movie. And I don't know if I cried the first time I saw it, but I, I felt like maybe it was the energy in the room or something. Like, you could hear a pin drop. Is documentary filmmaking the literal, absolute truth? No, it's not. What it is is the emotional truth. All right, good enough, right? Dip to black, baby.